we had 35 cultural initiatives collected uh, by these uh, cities that are uh, MESOC pilots uh, partners. And today we will have uh, uh, this Pechacucha presentation, Barcelona, Athens, Isile Molino, Milan, Valencia and Cluj-Napoca. So uh, I will present very shortly the general landscape of Barcelona as a city. The first thing is that uh, the municipality itself is quite small in a quite big uh, and large uh, metropolitan area. So 1.5 uh, million uh, people in a metropolitan area of close to 5 million. Uh, a city that used to receive, not now of course, 8 million annual foreign tourists. So that also explains some of the contradictions and the tensions that uh, the city have to, to manage. And a city that has close to 20% of foreign people, most of them arriving in the last 20 years. So that's just to have a, an idea of the city. Uh, the city government uh, commit with the social impact of culture. We have now uh, a left coalition in the, in the government of the city. And uh, that explains a little bit why they are so interested in the social impact of culture. Um, so the city it has uh, the municipality itself. Now we're just focusing in the municipality itself is a, a quite rich uh, place with many, many uh, cultural venues. Uh, it has been nominated UNESCO City of Literature, has a very large number of museums, uh, and 11% of the employees of the city works in the creative industry sector. Of, of course, industry, creative industry uh, sector uh, has a, a, a wide understanding of what this means. Uh, has a very large number of festivals, uh, 186 festivals a year, uh, plus the normal uh, regular activity of the cultural venues, uh, organize many interesting activities, which has uh, shared with you some of them. Uh, and uh, it's a city that uh, from a very long uh, period is uh, quite committed in international networks. So working and being part of uh, urban and cultural uh, networks uh, so that's part of the, the international uh, strategy. And just to give you a figure, the city budget in culture is 75 euros per in inhabitant, just to give you that the, the kind of commitment that the city itself uh, has. Of course, the distribution of, the, of these activities, these venues in the different districts of the city is quite different. Of course, there's a lot of the, in the old town, in the central neighborhoods, and it's more poor in the working class peripheral uh, neighborhoods. Next. So the vision of the city, uh, as I said, the municipal uh, government uh, uh, works on the idea that uh, local culture and proximity, it is important. And uh, uh, this is even more clear at this very moment with the pandemic uh, situation, uh, just transforming some of the international festivals to uh, a, a space for uh, mm, helping the local, the local artists and the local associations uh, to, to, to have visibility and at the same time to work in cooperation with international networks. The idea of the social dimension of culture, so the idea of cultural rights and fight against inequalities is part of the values of the, of the city government. Uh, at the same time, is a, is a city with a very a strong heritage, uh, cultural heritage. And of course there are museums, archeological work, but as well, uh, there is a, a push to work on the memory, the, 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 the importance of memory. And, and as you will see, some of our projects uh, works in this, in this connection between uh, uh, engagement and citizen participation and, uh, and the legacy of the different memories uh, in plural. Uh, as well, this idea of the transversali transversality, so culture, science, education, working together. Uh, and for the other side, this uh, general strategy that we see in many other cities, to, so to work with uh, talent and creative hubs and pushing creative industries. So that is a little bit the main landscape. Now, Giada will explain a little bit in more in detail some of the cases that we have been analyzed, which are, we are just presenting here five, but we, we are at this very moment close to 10 different projects analyzed in a quite deep way. Yes, thank you, Luis. As Luis said, uh, these are not all the cultural initiatives that we have analyzed in Barcelona. We are trying to select cases, not only in different cultural sector domains, but also with different approaches and diverse typologies of strategies implemented. 
So the first one uh, is Chanfra, which is a socio-educational socio center in a multicultural neighborhood of Barcelona, which is El Raval, uh, which aims to guarantee the right cultural access to citizens uh, by promoting social inclusion uh, through music and performing arts education and a number of activities with several institutions of the territory. Uh, then we have A Propa Cultura, which is a platform that aims at cultural democratization and facilitating attendance and visits to cultural venues uh, to people in a situation of vulnerability uh, through the collaboration of, for example, social center, health centers uh, in the whole region of Catalonia. Then we have Empalabra, which is the project that we will analyze more in depth in the next slide. And it's a project of collective creation uh, in the field of literature that involves refugees, migrants, and writers from Latin America residing in Barcelona. Uh, then we have Arti Part, that was an experiment of community artistic co-creation in the field of performing and visual arts. Uh, one of the strengths of this program was the creation of partnership with very different types of organizations uh, to develop a uh, community work in different neighborhoods uh, of Barcelona. Uh, it, it was managed by the Cultural Institute of Barcelona and involved neighbors of uh, the city to take part in a community art project as creators. So not only, for example, acting on a stage, but also taking part to the creative development of the performances. And last but not least, um, the El Parlante, uh, with the project Ciuta Esperanza, uh, which is an audiovisual project with young people of one uh, of the most deprived areas of Barcelona, which is Ciutat Meridiana. Uh, they define themselves uh, uh, as an edu communication program aimed on the one hand to promote critical thinking and reflection around media narratives, and on the other hand, to accompany young people in the creation of participatory videos that were cre totally created, filmed, and also act by these young participants. And through workshop and amateur co-creation, the young people acquire new skills and fight the stigma associated uh, with their neighborhood. Uh, so let's maybe briefly introduce a little bit uh, Athens and uh, its cultural dynamic. Of course, as you know, um, uh, Athens, let's say it's in the cradle of uh, history and culture uh, here locally. Um, the cultural field is very much interconnected with uh, history and uh, archaeology as well. So it is, uh, let's say, um, uh, one uh, the culture is in a in a bigger scope in, in Athens. Um, maybe we can share some numbers regarding uh, the um, regard, regarding uh, the Athens, uh, let's say, cultural uh, current landscape. Uh, so generally in, in Athens we have six million visitors uh, annually that uh, mainly uh, arrive here for in order to visit the history and its culture uh, um, and locally it is concentrated uh, almost 50% uh, of Greece's cultural activity. Uh, you can see that 34% uh, of festivals are organized, of Greece are organized locally here. Uh, almost half of uh, the cinema and visual arts uh, field is also placed here and um, uh, there are many, many different venues and sites that they are actually uh, active or host events. We can share maybe some uh, for Greece uh, on uh, the most recent consensus in 2018. Um, there has been over uh, 2.5 million of uh, audience in cultural events. And generally in Greece, more than 54 million of euros, uh, since we are also mentioning uh, financial, in some, we will mention financial uh, aspects in some of the next uh, focus groups that we will have. Um, over 54 million of euros, they are actually located to cultural events in Greece. So currently the vision of um, Athens be, uh, behind uh, its participation, uh, participation of the city in this project uh, mainly has to do with um, ideas such as collectivity and effective uh, social intervention, volunteering and um, actual communication with the citizens. Uh, currently the main plan that also later on um, city representatives will also present 
Um, what is the main point is to actually bring the city in the center of the cultural map and also create cultural paths with, within the city that they will interconnect, not only connect uh, locations and venues, but they will also create a network among um, the artists, the city, citizens uh, and visitors. So in that way, uh, active participation can be promoted and more uh, synergies than the uh, already existing ones uh, will be, let's say, um, uh, boost. Uh, so under the MESOC project and on the first part that we had to collect several activities, uh, we have collected uh, indicatively these four activities. One of them, the first one on the open municipal resources, we will uh, mention a few things about it later on. Um, another policy that we have integrated is the tickets for unemployed. This is um, something that it is happening uh, in Greece in a national level. So there are reduced tickets not only for unemployed but also for other um, uh, for other groups of citizens. The Athens Garden Festival that also Grazia mentioned uh, before that it's locally, um, it is locally implemented, interconnects green, green areas of Athens with culture. Um, the Culture in the Neighborhood project that it is, it was actually a project that had to do uh, with, um, it's quite similar to the Barcelona one that was presented before, uh, but it was not only targeting migrants, but also um, local art uh, in, uh, in neighborhoods. And also regarding the municipality, there are many educational problems and uh, programs and uh, free, um, uh, let's say, cultural activities in the municipal areas that they are supported. Uh, more specifically, on the open municipal uh, uh, resources and areas that we will mention, uh, it is an initiative that it is uh, organized annually during the summer period mainly, uh, from July to October. It is actually a movement that it is more participatory and what is actually promoting uh, is to target artists and um, and. Um, let's say, stakeholders from the contemporary culture, cultural field, that what they, they can do is actually use openly uh, municipal resources and areas in order to organize events there. Uh, so these events could be theatrical, dance performances, uh, etc. And they can actually use this infrastructure uh, for free. For example, last year there were uh, more than 100 artists that they uh, they participated in this, but um, the point here, uh, the main point here is that um, the city was not only offering the venues, but it was also offering access to all the technical support, for example, on new technologies on live streaming in order to uh, to tackle also the COVID situation. So there was um, something like a um, collaboration with the city also on the organization of the events. Uh, we can mention a few impacts that they actually came out from this uh, activity. So, of course, there was an increase in active participation of citizens as artists, and this is, uh, let's say, the field that we are uh, researching here in the ZOC, and the accessibility of, uh, of uh, public spaces. Um, there was a, a wide collaboration of the city with the citizens, and um, it opened the ground for uh, an open dialogue in culture. Um, <clears throat> uh, so, in order to give uh, the lessons learned uh, from these uh, activities and also some topics for discussion that we could use on the focus group, um, some of the lessons learned had to do with the fact that when something, a policy or such initiative starts from the city, this can promote visibility. So, the city can be a hub for the organization of events that also other stakeholders are included and the fact that uh, this is starts from the city, uh, it increases the visibility. So, um, this can actually promote uh, networking and synergies with other bodies. Uh, on the other side, the fact that citizens can active, actively participate and use the cultural venues, uh, this is creating a positive vibe on the, on the society and also um, it empowers citizenships of individuals uh, in the sense that they can understand that the municipal assets and city assets, either they are tangible or intangible, are actually, uh, let's say, as part of their property of their identity as well. So the city and the citizens, they are not two different and not connected areas, um, stakeholders that they cannot actually correlate at some point. Um, and just to give some food for thought for the next discussion that we will have in the focus groups, 
um, what we actually pinpointed from uh, the research locally. Uh, let's just uh, all think about how we can overcome the language barrier because in Greece main, most of the activities are let's say in the local language. So how can we create synergies between cities uh, outside of our, of our countries um, and uh, let's say speak the same language in terms of culture and uh, also what other best practices we can uh, we can promote in order to increase cultural democracy because the actual feedback from uh, impact from all these activities it's cultural democracy everybody is free to express its cultural um, uh, let's say identity and uh, either as an audience or as an artist Compared to Barcelona and Athens, uh, we are a very uh, small city in Italy, we know, but um, we are proud to be one of the most um, dynamical uh, of the greater Paris. That means um, our population is about 70,000 inhabitants, but uh, we have a higher intellectual profession um, in this population. We have a lot of, we have more jobs than inhabitants, and uh, we, are, um, we have the headquarters of uh, big companies in um, information technology, in uh, digital, or in, in media. So we have a population very connected, very smart, I can, I, can, I can say that. And as you can see, we have a city in the southwest of Paris uh, between um, the capital and, uh, and Versailles. And of course, because we are so close to the capital and to Paris, uh, our challenge is to offer to our inhabitants interesting cultural alternatives in the city and high value uh, services. For example, um, for us, we have the idea that the culture as a service, that means uh, our equipment, for example, are open uh, six days a week, including Sunday, and it's still rare in France, and which has been invaluable in uh, my city since uh, more than 25 years now. And it's an illustration of the municipal policy to encouraging the access of the culture. We are also the, the where they were the first to um, have an open public connection uh, to internet uh, in uh, 1905, and they offer a lot of different things. Of course, a document on many services like a musical instrument um, to access to a range of language courses. Um, of course, English, but also Chinese, Japanese, and Korean, because we have um, training cities in these countries, and a lot, of course, of different. Um, conferences. And for us, it's also important to have a big collaboration with the children association and schools. And um, if you are coming in CEC, you can discover, for example, the history of the Fort of EC. And this history has been preserved in an ultra modern district, like a smart district. So um, cultural action in EC is deployed in several um, facilities through uh, the city in order to grant its equal access to culture for all. For example, each of our public uh, libraries are located less than 20 minutes work from each uh, citizen. So for us, it's very important. And uh, I, I can just give you an example about what we are doing um, during a cultural event like um, this one is called Metamorphosis. Um, it's through this event cycle. We would like to remind us that the uh, architecture is also part of culture and if, of course it's so important for the urban area and that is the soul of a city is found in the line drawn by the great French or intentional architects for example we have um, working with uh, the american daniel Libeskin, uh, who was the architects of the grand zero in new york work um, in city Moino. And this project for us, it's important also because it allows a symbolic appropriation by the citizens of the architectural project in progress or to come in the city. And of course, is a hands participation of citizens in public decision making and uh, a greater awareness of citizen to the role of architecture in urban development in the city cultural um, development also. And what we can share uh, with you, maybe it's uh, um, our vision about the professional training in the cultural part, because uh, we have different uh, facilities. For example, we have, of course, a conservatory for the integration of music profession, but uh, we have also um, an equipment called the reactor who supports young people 
in current music uh, to about professionalization, professionalization for, excuse me. Um, the arcade school trains students to artistic profession, but also in our museum, it's a playing card museum. It was the first museum in France to be equipped with internet by light, the Li-Fi technology five years ago, but it also host an incubator um, of innovative cultural startups. And the downtown media library is has also a digital space dedicated to the very young people, a numeri mom, made up of interactive table, a listening share, educational game, and so on. And the Tendé series, another equipment in the Fort Tennessee, hosts the Microfoli, a digital museum system uh, created by the uh, La Villette Museum in Paris. And the, Cito, the city has also mobilized to enrich its digital offer during lockdown, of course, because during this COVID crisis, we have to, um, we had to create uh, something to keep the interest of people to the cultural life. And so we, of course, we create a different uh, thing uh, on, on the online. So for us, is a, some open question we want to share with the other cities. It's about the professional training, about the modernizing, and of course, about the impact of the COVID crisis on the cultural practices. Uh, thank you. So Milan um, is a city that was characterized by uh, disconnection, in a way, uh, between the objective importance of uh, its cultural production uh, in the national uh, panorama and the visibility of uh, this uh, production and this uh, flourishing of uh, activities. So in the last uh, 10 years, uh, there has been an effort both by the city administration and uh, by the local society to uh, let this um, importance become more visible. Um, and so this is why we, we chose this, um, the, the picture of the first uh, slide that refers to the initiative uh, Book City, that uh, although we don't uh, um, present this initiative later on in the presentation. Um, and uh, the um, role, uh, one important aspect uh, in uh, describing the context is the role of the municipal government that uh, has been acting both uh, uh, with the direct inter intervention uh, with its uh, cultural department, but also through uh, a more enabling approach uh, to um, nourish the local uh, vitality of uh, the um, actors, the cultural actors that are rooted in the city. Um, because one other peculiarity is uh, exactly the vitality of uh, diffused cultural networks made up by several different uh, actors and uh, places. And uh, um, there has been a renewed dynamic in the city in the last five to ten years. This uh, in general, not only in the cultural sectors, but uh, um, in general in the urban uh, ambience, in the urban development of the city, the last five to, to ten years have marked the really uh, materialization of some uh, urban development projects and uh, renovation uh, projects that uh, had been going on for uh, maybe two decades uh, that have uh, been uh, symbolized in a way, have been brought together in a symbolic way, but also in a very material way by the um, Universal Exposition of 2015. And so this has brought an increase, the growing recognition of the city's cultural assets both towards uh, its uh, citizens and uh, in uh, an international uh, panorama of uh, com intercity competition. About more specifically about the cultural uh, sectors and the cultural policies, the um, relevant element in this uh, um, point of view is the existence and the launch in 2016 of an uh, explicit uh, strategic plan for culture, uh, which goes in the direction of uh, uh, making the cultural policies uh, emerge in a more explicit way and to um, try to coordinate, not, not really coordinate, but um, conceive these uh, policies 
as a, a unique field of activity, uh, which was um, attempted by the launch of this strategic plan. That, of course, uh, is uh, is the main. Its main characteristic is to uh, try to create synergies with the overall urban development. And uh, uh, in the last year, uh, in the debates uh, that uh, concern the post-COVID vision of development of the city, there has been an explicit uh, importance given to culture in the general strategies of uh, um, recovery that the city and the local society can follow. Um, and the role of the culture um, can help in strengthening urban identity at the neighborhood scale. So by diffusing uh, the opportunities for access to culture and to cultural activities, uh, which uh, somehow echoes the um, debate about the 15 minutes city that uh, uh, has been going on in urban development uh, uh, ex among uh, urban development experts in the last few months. And uh, there, is, uh, there has been also one specific uh, proposal uh, in this uh, perspective to launch a new international uh, festival of performing arts, uh, exactly with this uh, view to support uh, uh, an explicit role of culture in the post-COVID vision of development. So uh, a quick overview of some uh, relevant projects uh, that have different uh, values in a way, different uh, features uh, for uh, their cultural uh, um, meaning in the, in the city. Some of these uh, relevant um, um, initiatives have been bringing about uh, a new use of public spaces, uh, like the Piano City initiative that, as you see, uh, happened in uh, iconic uh, venues uh, in the open uh, spaces of the city. Uh, then uh, other projects like Caravanserai Selinunte um, embed a specific attention of uh, policy making in the city for peripheries. And um, this project in uh, particular has been trying to involve uh, the residents of uh, um, public housing uh, estate uh, with the um, social uh, problems in the creation of uh, theater plays. Another peculiarity of Milan, and uh, I speak from uh, the Intermunicipal Center for Planning PIM, is that uh, the, the identity of Milan goes beyond the municipality of Milan. And uh, for instance, uh, there are some very relevant initiatives that are uh, carried on, carried out by municipalities that are in the metropolitan area, such as Il Pertini, which is a public library, library with a very modern and innovative conception, which uh, uh, has for sure a metropolitan relevance. And okay. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm running out of time. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, so I will go into the, the case study, which is the Prada Foundation, um, that is the new exhibition, permanent exhibition center of this uh, cultural foundation, which is supported by Prada, the, um, the, the, the fashion industry. As you see, uh, it is a very um, important uh, for the architectural project that uh, was uh, designed to host this exhibition center. And uh, in a nutshell, really, what we saw is that in this, uh, from this case, uh, culture acted as a catalyst, uh, like an urban catalyst, which fostered the urban identity of the area in the short term, and uh, in the medium term, may increase the overall attractiveness of this part of the city. And so the final uh, open question, is really the first one, the lesson one is uh, in Milan, the importance of this uh, in interaction between three elements, public policies, private organizations, and citizen activation. Uh, then another thing that we wanted to highlight, like many other speakers did, is uh, the mm, possible new roles for culture in this uh, 
pandemic situation to alleviate, assuage, heal the, um, the, the, the psychological uh, impacts of this uh, situation. And also, um, last point about what we learned uh, also regarding the concept of the MESOC project is to use uh, uh, a double scale of observation when we carry out even the uh, city analysis uh, to distinguish the single initiatives with their effect and the wider transition referring to the concept presented yesterday by Lorbach. And, okay. Uh, Valencia is a Mediterranean center located in the east coast of Spain, is uh, the third largest city of the country. Uh, it has two million of visitors per year and it, it is the um, Erasmus most attractive destination in Europe. About the context, uh, Valencia before the 2008 had uh, an urban strategy based on uh, big scale uh, facilities and uh, uh, major cultural and sport events. And this strategy has geopartized the um, official cultural program of the city. Uh, however, uh, this official layer uh, lies a vibrant city articulated through activism, frugal urban festivals, uh, and uh, um, active neighborhood. Uh, the, cal the Valencian cultural ecosystem is uh, characterized by a presence of a dense network of uh, music uh, training and music exhibition association, a powerful organization in the field of contemporary art, and a performing arts network. Uh, also, one of the most uh, popular cultural events of Valencia is Las Fallas Festival uh, that has been declared UNESCO Intangible Cultural Heritage of Humanity. About the vision of the city, we can synthesize it in the Missions Valencia 2030 uh, that aim to make uh, Valencia a healthy, sustainable, shared and entrepreneurial city by 2030. Uh, the main drivers of the city, the main innovation driver of the city are the public universities, uh, Las Naves as a public social and innovation center, and um, the museum consortium as a promoter of contemporary creation. Valencia is a world center for sustainable urban food, and it will be it will be world design capital in 2022. Okay, so we identify various cultural initiatives in the city uh, with the aim to improve citizen health and well-being. Uh, the first one is uh, Museum Museus per, per la Salud. Uh, it's a pilot project promoted by a very um, co a consortium composed by very different actors from the city. Uh, the project aimed to stimulate uh, the long-term memory of people suffering by Alzheimer's disease in its early stage and by using the cultural resource of Las Fallas Festival that are hosted in Las Fallas Museum. Uh, Caixa des Records, a project promoted by the Ethnology Museum of Valencia, uh, based on reminiscence uh, group therapy uh, through the object of the heritage collection of the museum um, to improve the quality of life of people living with dementia. Reseta Cultura is a project promoted by the ministry, uh, the, the regional ministry of public health and Las Naves. Um, the project consists in prescribing museum-guided tours uh, uh, from health centers. Um, Musica, Musica para el Autismo is an association with the aim to achieve uh, social integration and uh, better quality of life for people living with autism and their families through cultural activities. Finally, Estrategias Creativas, that is a um, program um, inserting a hospital, also in a hospital, um, consists in a therapy session for people with acquired brain damage. Okay, so following the model presented by the University of uh, Barcelona, I will go a little bit more in deep uh, 
to explain Museum for Perla Salud initiatives. As inputs, uh, we identify a very strong partnership between different actors from the city, uh, Las Naves, Fayas Museum, Fayas Artists Guild, the University of Valencia, and the Alzheimer Family Association. So we have a public sector, a, a university, a private sector, and the civil societies as well. Um, the activity consists in a series of um, guided visits to the Fayez Museum for a group of people suffering from Alzheimer's disease at its early stage. And um, uh, by the um, guided visit are supported by the uh, retired um, Fayez artists, by psychologists and uh, staff uh, uh, from the Alzheimer Association. The project has outcome in two different impact areas, uh, health and well-being and uh, people engagement and participation for two different uh, groups uh, that uh, have uh, take part to the project. In the health and well-being area, we um, notice an increase of uh, emotional well-being of people suffer um, Alzheimer's disease and also an increment of the self-esteem of uh, FIAS retired artists. Um, at the meantime, in the area of people engagement and participation, there was an increment of the access and uh, of the cultural participation for people with special needs, and also an increment of the civic en engagement of uh, FIAS retired artists. Uh, what we identified as a key factors in this project uh, is the multidisciplinary partnership uh, with different expertise. Uh, they put together a lot of different skills and competence with competencies from different areas. Uh, they think that they share the same holistic vision of health um, the favorable context that uh, there is in Valencia at the moment uh, for these kind of initiatives and uh, um, the use in, of heritage to, um, to stimulate memories and uh, to uh, improve the emotional well-being. Uh, this, this link will be like um, a path uh, across our MISOC matrix and the fact the project has been replicated in other contexts. So the open questions uh, that we would like to, that we learn and we like to discuss in the focus group later on, um, is that an initiative can produce outcomes in more than one impact area. And we will like to compare common and different path and key factors uh, with other cities initiatives. Thank you. Briefly, this is a secondary city in Romania. It has um, an interesting multicultural profile. It is a university city. It has the highest vitality, cultural vitality in the country after the capital, which is Bucharest. As you can see, it has a very rich cultural agenda of over 3,000 cultural events per year. And most remarkably, I would say about the city, it has um, a contemporary art scene um, that is very dynamic and especially rooted in the independent cultural sector. About the, the city relation, city's approach to culture, the, the current strategy, which is actually just expired, so a new one is being prepared, is built around three pillars, which are innovation, university, and participation. And culture is seen as a, as a key strategic fact, factor that is transversal to these um, three, three pillars. Uh, Another thing that, that is relevant is that um, the city is very much defined by a collaborative culture. And uh, this is something that has developed in, uh, and increased in the, in the past um, uh, 10 years. So a lot of activism and collaborations between the so uh, civil society, the universities, um, private sector, and, and municipality. And maybe as a, a specificity, although we do not have a lot of um, specific cultural policies uh, in the city. Um, most of the public institutions are supported either directly by the Ministry of Culture or the, or the regional authorities. 
Um, the, the Cluj Cultural Center is the organization that, that I'm, I'm also representing here um, and is part of in this project is, um, is a new type of organization. Uh, we can call it an intermediary organization, which is uh, made of, uh, of the member of 104 uh, organizations, which are cultural organizations, public and private, the local universities, business clusters, and the local and regional uh, administration. And um, it is, has developed as the legacy of the, of the bid of the City for the European Capital of, uh, of Culture title, an unsuccessful bid, but there was the commitment to continue the, the implementation of this program. So most of the, of the let's say, the initiatives that are um, targeting a city-wide impact uh, that hopefully will develop into policies are being currently tested and piloted uh, within the Cluj Cultural Center. For, uh, for the MESO project, as case studies, we look at five um, initiatives taking place in the city. Uh, some of them are artistic activities or art-focused activities. Art therapy by Create, Act, Enjoy is a yearly um, intensive program uh, in, uh, in local hospitals where patients um, receive support through various uh, artistic activities. Unspeakable is, um, is a, um, a project that is um, intended to boost the creativity and self-confidence of teenagers through uh, participating in writing music without having a previous uh, training in music. While Tableau project and Lib project are mostly research uh, projects that are, um, have been carried out um, by the local university um, in partnership with, with local organizations. And I will speak a little bit more about Inner Space, which is a project that the Cluj Cultural Center is, um, um, carry, carries out and um, which aims to actually generate um, a certain structural change in the long term on this topic of culture and, um, and well-being. And as you can see, it explores the potential of arts to enhance both individual and community well-being. And it has three main components. One of them, it is carrying out pilot projects so that we can um, give um, very uh, clear illustrations on how art can art and culture can contribute to boosting health and well-being. And for instance, just some examples of these are um, a pilot project to um, support people with um, uh, burnout symptoms that we carried out last year. Last year, and um, uh, currently we have an implementation, a pilot project that is to develop through a participatory design process um, an experimental space for art and well-being in one of the local schools. Now, the, the idea is that once these pilot projects would be able to generate um, uh, sound results, we are advocating for their um, trans transfer, their scaling up into uh, local policies or at least um, to replicate them in more, uh, in more public institutions or spaces. So this is the second, the, the, the third pillar is about advocating for, uh, for culture and well-being we have um, a forum, that, an international forum dedicated to this. Um, we, we set the basis for creation uh, of, a, of a think tank, an interdisciplinary group of, of experts from culture, science, um, health, psychology to work together on, um, on this uh, topic. And we organize roundtable discussions and dialogues between um, this type of experts. And more, more importantly, we, we, in our pilot projects, we make sure that we, in, we work together and, um, uh, and use all these um, experiences from the various disciplines. And at the core of this is, is uh, research with our intention to contribute to, the, uh, to enlarging the evidence base for, uh, for the impact that arts and culture have for, for uh, health and well-being. And a few of the results that we have so far, on one hand, very concrete um, impacts on, on health and well-being. 
our pilot project on on uh, participants with burnout had very positive results um, uh, an in, a decrease of burnout from uh, from high level to medium and low after the cultural intervention uh, increased creativity increased resilience for participants uh, one of our research uh, that we've done uh, last year um, has uh, looked into the cultural consumption and its effects on well-being um, Europe-wide in the first months of the pandemic, and it already showed that um, people turn to culture for um, for coping with the pandemic, and that there was an increase in cultural consumption, even though the cultural venues as such, they have been closed down during the, the lockdown. And there are very interesting results about how people relate to, to arts in, uh, in these circumstances. And it, it points out to, to culture being uh, as, a, as an important resilience factor. The multidisciplinary collaborations that have been developed are, I think, are very promising. The, the fact that we are able to, to soon propose to, to the municipality and, and the educational ecosystem um, participatory design process for um, creating well-being in schools to, through design. And um, uh, of course, increased awareness. Um, and I think from, from our dialogue, dialogue with the municipality, with the um, local universities, this is what has been um, really evident. A willingness to, to work on this topic, to see uh, how we can replicate and scale up those pilot projects that uh, that show to uh, to have uh, a positive impact and um, some of the questions that that uh, we would like to bring further on is um, first an observation that audiences tend to to be more interested when the topic of well-being is is defined as in the case of, of burnout it was easier to understand what you're offering and and what they get from it um, when uh, when collecting data for research i sometimes um, uh, for it is easier to do this research when it is a seven weeks intervention to have a before and after but it's much more difficult to to get to people's feedback after one visit in the museum they will they do not have the time to spend in in filling in the questionnaires that that include scientific tools that take a little bit of time so this is something that is interesting to to see how it can accommodate the the needs and the different contexts where art is taking place um, as such although there is growing evidence for the for the impact that culture can have in in health and well-being still it is not really taken seriously and this we can we can definitely see not not in the context of um, of um, policy making for instance it is taken as a, it is seen as a as a catalyst as a partner but not necessarily as a, as a solution if you want and um, uh, one more personal reflection is that the topic of well-being just like culture is is rather broad and uh, when you when you start working about it uh, everyone uh, talks about it in their own different way, from leisure to uh, more deeper questions. And I think this is really interesting to be able to frame clearly what you're talking about, at least in a specific instance. And, and also for the cultural sector, this dilemma between culture for well-being, which means, uh, which implies a certain instrumentalization or culture as well-being, that simply cultural participation the artistic art as it is without being meant to be um, uh, to, 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 to be designed for health and well-being is contributing to health and well-being it's rather interesting to explore and i i would like to bring forward this idea that is important again from the perspective of artists and and cultural operators that for we would like to see associating to to the notion of well-being this notion of sense making that is very specific to culture and I will leave it here. Thank you very much.